Hey you guys, welcome to another episode of Jalopy Junkers. We are going back to a lot that you might remember, the angry guy in Philly. I mean, you're gonna hit this, but. a Lincoln that they need and want removed. Gates unlocked this time. Look at that. Now you remember this was completely full of cars before and uh, trees had grown up around them and somebody was using it as a storage lot for a long time. There actually used to be a, a building here, a factory that co collapsed and then you know, some guy removed it and then claimed it kind of as his own little pad to park cars. That's how it went. And, then I guess didn't pay the taxes for a long time and another guy came and acquired the property through a legal manner. And then there's this other property attached to it that he has now acquired and oh my gosh. This must be the Lincoln. Looks like late 70s Continental I guess. I uh, don't know a lot about these. I can see it's missing the hood ornament. But, wow, uh, I mean, it looks complete. <laughs> well, that's cool. And then we got an old Mercedes over here. Take a look at uh, Oh yeah, that's, that's all there. And what is this? A little station wagon. Uh, looks foreign, maybe a Volvo. I don't. I'm not sure. Let's take a look inside of this one. Uh, oh yeah, it is a Volvo. Look at that. The floor is completely gone, and this is probably just scrap. But you know, man, how long have these been here? This is no joke. Oh, cast iron sink. Look at that, it's, that's not a steel one either. This is actually really nice. Let's see, let's see if he wants to jump this. I'll take this today. Use that for something when I get a bigger, bigger shop, you know? And you got these roof tiles. That's pretty nice. Pile of paint cans that have all rusted through. And let's get closer to the back of that Lincoln. Since, you know, I mean, that's what this video is supposed to be about. Get some from foam panels, four by eight. These have been sitting outside forever and you could see things chewing on them for nesting materials, but those are really good. I mean, you could insulate a cabin with that or what have you. Some nice thing about winter time. I don't have to worry so much about, about bees and wasps. Look at the back of this. So we're actually, we're in the Germantown section of Philly and it's a really neat area that has all sorts of beautiful buildings. But obviously this one completely neglected for a very long time. But the, it's got good bones. I mean, look at that, that stone walls and brick walls. They are holding nice and stout. And uh, let's get back over here. Oh, it's one of those, uh, Saw horse stands, you guys remember these? All the wood got rotted and termite infested, but the steel is still holding up. Man, the trunk, lid, deck lid is rotted out pretty good. Uh, look at the key slot. You can see, well, the stainless is still good, but that's been just sitting. I mean, these are, these are signs of like, Sometimes people say in the, the comments, they're like, oh, this video is completely staged. Like on the Cat 977, they said that. I don't know who would 
would do, spend their time to try to stage a vehicle. And clearly you could never stage something of this magnitude. I mean, this is, hey, how are you, man? I stopped for a minute. I was talking to that guy because I saw him just kind of scratching his head looking at me. <laughs> Explain the situation. It's a town car. All right. Get these. This looks like asbestos. Big, thick panel of it. And these pieces of slate. These are really nice, actually. Okay. Is it going to be unlocked? No. Oh, I can see it in there. It's not unlocked. Darn. Yeah, no keys, no title for this. Just some paperwork. Hang in there. Get the heck out of here. Well, maybe not locked over on the passenger, but that's not doing anything for us. I'm surprised this roof is not rotted all the way through. I wonder if on the edge it's, it is because it's been capturing everything under there. I mean, surprisingly, it's not. There's the original paint, actually. Who knows if it's original, but probably. I don't even know they painted underneath these, right? All right, let's get an attack plan here. This is going to be... We're going to have to come back with the trailer and coming in this entrance is just not really an option with the trailer but luckily we have plenty of room to turn around i mean ideally he would get all this junk moved first and make it a lot easier like especially i could get right in front of it jackknife trailer even just get the tundra and winch it straight forward but i am not driving on this pile of rubbish And here's the quick attack plan for today. Gonna try to winch it out. I'm not too worried about damaging the body or anything. And you know, that's pretty heavy car. We're on the leaves here. So we got the tree in case we wanna hook up the back for that. Somebody had a hoarding collection pile here. A lot of stuff was good. But now, oh. That's a little bit better. Now I can tug her over. Can't find my chains in there. Pile mess of a truck, so do a basket. This should be all right. I got one snatch block, and we'll see if she budges. Yep. Took a slip and almost ate it on this piece of wet plywood covered in leaves. Look at that. It's good until whoo, they slip out. Didn't even have to hook the tundra up to the tree. I think that wet concrete and the leaves really helped us out. 
And that was straight 100% duty on this Badlands. Pretty decent little winch, especially considering it was 10 feet underwater in the Delaware River and still operating. Of course, I took it apart and cleaned everything, but. You know, one thing I always do on this winch now is I leave it on disengaged because especially using the wireless remote, like I just don't trust if the solenoid in here could stick and just, you know, rip the bumper off or keep going and burn the winch up. I used to actually disconnect it from the battery, but now I figure, you know, as long as it's disengaged here, then it's good to go in case it gets stuck on. Cause I've had it, I've had the, the remotes act up a couple times where they don't shut off exactly where I want them to, you know? And I'm sure that's common sense with winches to do that. But for me, uh, you know, I just started doing it recently. See, I gotta get this truck reorganized. I'm thinking remove the rear seats and fully, fully redo it. I just, that's gonna be a new year resolution. And we're in January now, so I should probably get on that. Let's tug her down into position with the kinetic rope. Who knows, we might not even have to tug it. Now, here's just spinning the driver rear, passenger front. I'm gonna hit the air locker though and see if that does anything. And mostly to verify it still works since I don't use it very often. Definitely working because I felt the truck shifting sideways. Had a little bit more power, but not quite enough. We're gonna need that kinetic energy. And that ought to do it. I got this little hump back to trailer right up to it. That's not a route. And yeah, uh, gotta run to another thing to do right now checking out a property and then i suppose come back tonight or tomorrow at least now we know what we're dealing with we're all set up i, I dealt with the neighbor too he was kind of pissed off at for a second there it seemed but once i explained the situation and then i had to recall uh, the guy i was dealing with because apparently yeah this property is still in acquisition stages i suppose you'd call it the property line was right here so everything there had to had to go as part of this one and then you know this place this is uh you know it almost looks like the wall it's buckling out a little bit i don't think there's too much holding it together as he was saying uh, he was told by his his guy that maybe the termites holding the hands are the only thing holding this building together i would actually love to take a look inside but well, it's open. I don't think it's very safe to get going here, though. Oh, wow. Nothing there. Look at this. It's probably from the 1800s, you know? Basement. Or, no, actually, no, it's just a crawl space under there. Whoa, what is this over here? Is that an old drill press? Yeah, there's no basement down there. We just got a couple feet. What is that noise? This is old uh, bandsaw, I guess? Hutchinson Manufacturing Company, Norristown, Pennsylvania. That belt just broke from, from sitting here. Look at that. Motor is locked up. It's just the water leaking, but I don't see it going anywhere. And maybe it's just water rushing past the pipe or something. I don't know. I wonder if that's asbestos too or something. It's like, is there a picture here? I thought that was a bell for a second. That'd be gone. An old bronze bell. I got the asbestos tiles on the floor. Watch your step. These are like 2 by 12 2 by 14s under the floor there, the, the joists. Oh, well, there's a basement in this section of the building, or side of it. Oh, it's just a little cross space for utilities. Wow, look at that old furnace or boiler, <laughs> steam boiler. A water heater. Thing. <laughs> wow, 
Yeah, there's not much holding this up though. I mean, you can see. Yeah, it's uh, don't disturb anything essentially. And don't come here during the snow or the rain. Yeah, crawl space beneath the stairs and old paint peeling. Wow. Yeah, so these videos, you know, they kind of turn into a little bit of everything. You should be wearing a dust mask in here. I mean, if you're doing this kind of stuff all the time, you better. Or just don't disturb it. You can see there was a drop ceiling like two feet in between and this giant fluorescent looks like out of a factory a fireplace some automotive parts gears and bell housing so this guy was a motorhead you now his car's out back i guess this is the stairs upstairs the stairs upstairs whoa This is beautiful. Imagine. Just turn back the clock, guys. I suppose I'll put timestamps in. I'll have to make a note of that. Look how close it is to the building next to it, too. I wonder if when this was built, maybe there was nothing there and they had a beautiful view out, then they put this brick building next to it. That would be my guess because it's, uh, this is definitely 1800s. Or, I don't know, but all stone construction. And actually, I think this building is savable. He said, no way, but if you go through this and see some, somebody was coming in and sistering stuff up. Second story fireplace. Whoa. Yes. Old cast iron claw foot tub. That thing's a beaut. High weighs 500 pounds. Water heater just sitting on a steel milk crate. Hey, looking back over at my truck in the yard. And I guess let's check out the third story. What the heck we're this far, right? How could you not? I mean, everything honestly feels pretty sturdy. Looks bad from the outside, but. Yeah, this was definitely you know, put in after, and that must have sucked. Unless, I guess if this was your bedroom, it'd be pretty cool. Just climb out your window and hang out there. Beautiful view. Even the roof system's holding up really good. I mean, yeah. This newer plywood, too. So somebody, you know, they were trying to keep this thing going. Good storage, too. Uh, all right. Oh, I guess that wraps this little side tore up oh, wait wait a second it's always okay yeah that's it a big big crack in the wall there that uh wraps this one up let's let's get out of here in one piece suppose i did forget to mention this mg sitting here put the top down how did they leave the top down it's not even like it rotted through they just left it that way so that might be something in the future along with those two was gonna go pick the car up next day but uh, we got a little snowstorm rolling in so Gus let's go check on mommy she's uh, out there working on the Mustang he doesn't want to come out in the snow good boy let's go how you make it out yeah, I didn't get very far I'm just trying to figure out how to get the back seats out oh I can show you that Jen's doing a video on this Mustang some some TLC and such Oh yeah, it's probably not ideal weather to go drive down there. But check it out, the, the tarp system. I added another little section and uh, that's keeping the snow out of the carport. It's used to just blow all in. Are you a snow doggy? Look who was hiding under the car, Mr. Turbo. Hey baby, I got a little surprise for you. Well, camp stove for you to stay warm. 
Oh uh, yeah, we are back and not gonna be able to pull in with these cars here, but should be able to back up that. The problem here is as you come in, you gotta come over this way, but there's just nowhere to really maneuver your truck in that alley and you have this big block wall here. I see part of the problem. We're bringing a piece of plywood with us. Oh, it's wedged under the differential. Giving it the old bumper test, but we got a couple visitors. All right, so they were flipping out on me first. One guy's an attorney, he said drop the car right now. Uh, but I gotta give them the guy's number. That's what he thought originally too, but apparently he said the property line's on the edge of this building. That's what he said. So. Again, there's just not value in that away. car, man. It's not, yeah. Yeah, I'm not trying to be difficult, man. Uh, I'm Chris, by the way. I'm Chris as well. Okay, nice to meet you. Okay, that uh, started crazy and smoothed out. Bumper jack time. Let's see if the bumper rips off. Oops. <laughs> this is a bad handle design by DeWalt. Fills up with water, it's frozen.
I'm well, pulling out of here, I'm in the same situation he was. Definitely can't pull a left turn. And we'll have to go right, and it's still a little bit tight, but that's a one way with traffic coming down it. That's a one way, too. Hopefully, I don't have to back down this whole road. We will make it. That's actually what he should have done when he left. Uh, all right. get this in the garage last night because uh, we got a little bit of snow and Jen wanted some help with her Mustang on the lift so now let's do that get this cleaned off get her in and assessed I did the right thing, put her up in there, let it dry off a little bit. And you know, it's a big ask for this asymmetric to be on here backwards. So I did go ahead and hit up Harbor Freight for some of these two ton post jacks. It's really nice with those on there. I mean, you can't rock this thing at all. Super sturdy you know, if you're working underneath. But uh, let's, let's take a look around. You know, obviously the tires are all shot and square, but they do spin and underneath we can see the radiator support is pretty rusty actually completely gone so that's gonna be a problem along with the condenser support too that's that's just all rotted out we are, oh this side's locked up okay now based on the pictures i was looking at this is a 77 to 79 lincoln and it's either got the big 460 or a 400 hopefully it's the 460 you know um oh man look at those belts i mean you can tell that has not been spun over in quite some time uh you're gonna have to definitely get that fan shot out of the way before we go rotating it over Oil filter's a little crusty, but no rust holes in it yet. Let's just keep on going. Obviously, no leaks, unless all the oil's already leaked out, but it's been sitting here and all the water's dried up. Okay, yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty damp. I'm sure that trans is probably empty, but uh, the factory catalytic converters, get the Ford emblem on there. And those are probably waste some money. Oh, obviously, rust holes in the floor. I mean, this is, I almost am afraid to go, go in this car because of how it's going to smell and the amount of mosquitoes that are probably back to life now. You can see this was undercoated 
And that actually, you know, it did a good job on it. Like considering this was sunk in the ground, yeah, everybody says that the undercoating causes more rust, but as you can see, it, uh, yes, it was peeling away in certain areas, but it did a good job protecting. And the frame, not undercoated, but that is nice. Yes, parking brake cables ripped. We got the Ford nine inch rear. How about it? A little bit of leak from the pinion seal, but that I could probably throw up, maybe get some coin for if, if this ends up being a parts mobile. And it's very nice that the, the drum brakes are not locked up on either side. The gas tank strap rusted through, leak in. Oh, that's not even a drop. That's just turned into like some crusty stuff. This one's probably about to rip off too. Oh, it feels like that's full of something. And that muffler we had ripped off. Uh, back of the frame, you know, pretty solid. Okay, look at that mount right there. That's decent. And uh, far back, a little bit, a little bit more rusty. A little bit. That was sunk in the ground now. Got the air shocks in the back. Very crusty brake lines. Probably have a good sound because we do still have one muffler on there. Well, that's all I need to see. Let's uh, let's pop the hood. The hood pop's gonna be in here and oh boy that is terrible looking and yeah, we got these windows cleaned off it's <laughs> it's not good we got the wing window or is that a roll down wing window or a fake wing window i don't know i up breaking this window aren't i so that's some pretty good access. Oh, come on. Well, I know it's not frozen since it's been sitting in the garage here. How about a piece of rope? Do a slip knot. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, not might be a little fat to get in the door though. E. I'll get it in there. Oh yeah, that's gonna be nice. Cinch her up tight. Here we go. There it is. Oh! <laughs> Watch some critters come running that one out. All right. Oh, that's bad. It smells like an old musty, moldy basement house that's been sitting in a forest for 20 years. Yeah, we're gonna drop the ozone generator in here before we do anything else. Of course, that's not gonna wanna pull either. Gosh darn it. Yeah, this was a really humid environment for a while. Mm, not much saving to do on this car, guys. But, you know, we're still gonna give it a valiant effort, right? Eek. Oh, sticking up the whole garage. Door operates nice though. Oh. There it goes. Some vice grips just to hold it in the out position. I mean, most of the time when a hood doesn't pop, you can just give her a little hit on the hood, but uh, that's not gonna work in this case. And boy, this smell kind of brings me back to my childhood. It uh, reminds me of one of my friend's basements. It smelled just like this. Actually, oh man, I'm sure I'm getting all sorts of nasty stuff right now. Quadrasonic tape deck. 
Yes! Yeah, well, the clock stopped at 5.03 in 20 seconds. It shows the seconds on there. That's pretty cool. Got the electronic antenna. How many miles do we have? 42,000 miles. I'm probably 142. But, you know, no tears in the seats, actually. So, oh, yeah, a couple here. Really stinks with the, the mice that get in. You, you know, actually, for all I know, this, this didn't have any mice in it because... This mice might have just uh, fell down from, from sitting forever and then everything, you know, I had a bunch of mildew and such under there. Because I don't, I don't smell mouse turds. I mean, at first look, I was thinking definitely, but anyway, let's, let's just see what's under the hood. Ooh, rusty. Don't bend the hood now. Gotta pull forward and up. And maybe hit it with some lube. Alright. Okay. Jesus. This thing is terrible. Yes, there were a few critters living under the hood. They got this bundled up real nice. Super toasty. Oh, that looks like a pretty big engine. And looking over at the label, sometimes these don't have the engine size on them on older cars. But we have got the, yes, engine family 460, 7.5 liter. Heck yeah, so this isn't a complete waste of time. Looks like an oil filter on there, eh? So oh, we will, oh, I'm surprised that's coming right off. Look at that. Yeah, you never know. That's a good sign. No critters have made it in. We got a four barrel, of course, because it's the 460. I don't think they ever made a 462 barrel. I could be mistaken though. I mean, the cool thing is we are all complete. What do we got for a battery? This is, oh, it's another Sears battery. A Sears Die Hard, okay. So it's not quite the low-grade Sears, like what was in the uh, the Cadillac out there in Idaho. And this is the kind of stuff you can't make up with a, a car that's been sitting, like I, I think I was saying earlier in the video. scrap value for this thing because otherwise there goes some of my profits in the trash can you know curious to see if these old tires take any air and the best way to fill old questionable tires is to not fill them at all just replace them but if you must you use a long extension like this clip it on and then stand back because if they're gonna blow usually it happens when you're filling them up the first time now we're a safe distance away let it rip I think the bead's leaking a little bit on the back side. Twenty-five PSI in each. See if any of those actually hold. Oh, a couple checks under the hood. The carburetor linkage actually looks completely fine, and that choke closed up. Really good shape there. No rust. Power steering, not that that is too important. Yeah, we got oil in there. It's not on the stick, but it's got oil. The radiator, cap's just sitting on there. And it is bone dry with a bunch of powdery corrosion down in there. Engine oil dipstick goes into the timing cover up here. We got uh, a little overfilled, but nice black oil. Good sign. Not gonna worry about the trans for now, but let's go ahead and check this brake fluid. 
You can see this has got a, a hydro boost set up instead of a, a vacuum booster on it. Oh, look at that. Fresh. Sure, a couple pumps with the power brakes will blow those lines right out, though. And look at this. On the side of the red, we got some service records from Erdenhide Service Center, 5-15-1987. How about that? A gold marker? Or maybe they just scratched the paint? I'm not sure. So it was definitely running in 87. Didn't want to cut the fan shroud or deal with taking the fan off, but you know, we couldn't really rotate the engine over since that was dragging on there, so now we can hand rotate it. Feels like 22 millimeter, one inch, seven eighths. I'm sorry, it's neither of them, 15 sixteenths. Get a little lube down into the intake now, without pulling the plugs or messing with anything. Let's see if this engine budges over or if she's locked up. Oh. I see it budging a little bit there. Yeah, she's free. Those belts are uh, kind of funny. I almost want to just hit the starter and watch all that disintegrate. Pulleys are so shot. I'm going to slip and just slam my hand into all this rust, aren't I? Yeah. Never set an old battery on a concrete floor. If it's leaking at all, and that acid gets on your concrete, it'll etch it and destroy it. <laughs> yeah! Sounds great. Well, the next thing is gonna be getting some power over to the ignition coil. Let's pop this dizzy off, see what that looks like underneath. I'm sure it'll be fresh, all right? Yeah, not bad at all. Oh, so this doesn't have points. This has the Dura Spark tested tough. Well, this will be nice because uh, we can prove how reliable and great this is. It gets pretty bad rap, but I've showed up to a few rigs that have the, uh, the Dura Spark ignition, and sometimes they just work. You know, usually they just work. So, looking kosher in there. I have to clean out no points. Just got to get a hot ran over to the coil, which should be. This double wire, uh, one's red and black, and the other says TOC test on it. So that would be the pulsating ground. Oh yeah, good spark. How about it? Hey, look at these belts. Those are gonna fly off in my face when this thing starts. I won't be standing in the plane of them though. Uh, we are making some progress. I have got the radiator back in because, you know, we got the trans lines going there, so I can't fire it up without those. And got some metal strapping for lower supports and then, you know, just zip ties on the top. But it's, it's on there good enough. Leaving the AC condenser and fan shroud out for now. I'm now going to run over to my storage yard and grab a battery for this because I have one in a Mercury Grand Marquis. And you see the tires did not hold air at all, so we got to get some some used tires somewhere. Also running the ozone generator in here, which, wow, it's uh, a little smoky and hazy, but it doesn't smell burnt or anything. But anyway, I'm gonna let that go to town. It's on a timer. Oh. <laughs> let that go for a while, kill off the mold and whatnot and anything living in there, that stuff will We'll do a good job. I mean, it ain't gonna take the stink away, but uh, at least hopefully kill off the mold. All right, it's time to fire it up. You can see a little rain moved in, melted the snow. We've got the auxiliary fuel hooked up and the line coming from the tank over to a bottle in case something comes out. Well, let's open this up and see if the level drops at all or if the carb overfills. Here we go. 
We got flow. A little lub tap. And it appears the float valve is sealing, which is always amazing to me when a carp sits that long. That, that valve, I mean, it took and it sealed. Incredible. I think this is going to run like a champ. Ignition is juiced and I now have a starter button by popular request. You guys told me to quit arcing and sparking the wires, so finally uh, put one of these together. Here we go. It's going to fire right off. Perfect, built Ford tough. Almost perfect. Oh, even the headlights. I don't know if you guys just saw that, but that headlight's closed. <laughs> Look at it go. These will help clean that crud out. And there, there it goes, opening up once it loses vacuum. <laughs> oh, I love those headlights. Now we gotta get some antifreeze in here, maybe a couple new belts, but we'll we'll let those clean the pulleys out first. And yeah, I mean, it's uh, this thing's just about ready to drive, minus the interior. I kind of forgot about that. Choke was stuck on because of a broken vacuum line. I'm sure this has all sorts of vacuum line issues, but let's fire it back up. That clacking noise you hear up front is the belts and the AC compressor. Little tap I hear starting to. I want to run this for another couple seconds and then uh, we're going to drop the oil out. We'll get some water in it. Probably cut the belts off for now too. But boy, that sounds pretty darn good for being uh, in hibernation for, I'm going to say at least 25, 30 years. That belt slapping up and down. It's actually bouncing back and forth and hitting the power steering pulley is one of the noises. Oh, there it goes. Ow. This thing is healthy. I get some fresh oil and a filter in there. Look at that one way to get the belts off, right? It's still empty out of the pump, which is good. Yeah, pretty black. Now, I, I wouldn't have really changed this if it was good looking oil. So quick anyway, but this stuff's black as night. Also, when these thin oil filters get rusty, it's uh, always a, a risk. I've seen them rust through and cause just a, a darn mess. There's a fuel line coming from the tank. And look at that thing. That looks like it got crispy hot and almost caught on fire at some point. But no wonder it wasn't even trying to pull anything. Is that, uh, that wasn't sealing. I guess we could pull out of this real quick with the vacuum, see if there's anything that comes out of the tank. Never mind. what am I saying? This has got a couple rust holes. It's probably pretty low. Oh, I thought for sure that would just stab right through. Yeah, that thing's empty. Well, I just actually cut the pickup hose and it went gurgle, 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 and it smells terrible. So we're gonna just get this hazard tank out of here because it's you know ready to fall out on the road anyway. is holding it in. There we go. Oh, it's completely rusted through on the top. Oh boy. I can't believe there was anything in that that uh, that hose. You know, technically this is supposed to be done to every car before it goes to the scrapyard. But I can tell you, it's not what happens. Taking a look at this. Yeah, that was the bone dry and just crumbling. All we would have been picking up is 
piles of rust. Well, this is actually ready for the scrapyard. They don't even have to clean it out. Oh, look at that. The stainless steel on the, the pickup. Actually, this, I need this for the Torino. Yeah. We, uh, right now, I have it just vented out to the atmosphere with a filter. And this is a little inline spring loaded one way valve that I couldn't find anywhere. So that's kind of awesome for the good old Gran Torino. This pickup screen, this is actually not good. Now that's done. <laughs> and it's completely clogged up. So that's, you know, when you do these flying drives, it's like, I always try to save the original tank because I mean, sometimes you just get lucky, but you see that one's just completely gummed shut. That, like, I can't believe when I took that hose. Well, I guess I do believe it now. Yeah, see, there's, there's the, uh, the gas. I guess let's keep moving down the list. Uh, we gotta get some tires or something on here because these are not gonna move anywhere. Yeah. Lead hammer for the win. Not bad at all. Tons of meat, brand new pads in there. And that seems to be a common thing that I see. These cars, these wonderful old cars have been parked. They, uh, it's like they just had a brake job and then they end up getting parked. You can see somebody replaced these brake hoses too, which are now dry routing and falling apart. Same deal. There's the wheel weights. So oh, that was actually the weight off the drum. Oh, three of them. Oh, baby. Well, actually, I got a couple rims off of a ranchero. Tires that hold air. Oh, the bolt pattern fits too. Except the center is too small. That'll do it. And don't worry, these were already trashed. Anyway, look, somebody drilled out and elongated the holes or had a, a loose wheel. That, that's, uh, that'll do. I mean, they're not hub-centric anymore. Definitely not as strong, but it'll work for rolling them around. Oh. oh, is it the calipers hitting it or the tie rod end now? Oh, yeah, I guess it is hitting something back there. Mm. Well, you know I'm not taking no for an answer here, so we're gonna make it work. That'll do it. And just in case you were wondering, this was too small for here. I had to get cut out or ground out. But I'll actually keep this in my junk bin for something. It's a nice circle. Oh, it still hits the caliper. Gosh darn it. Not gonna work. Yeah. Hey, at least it'll still work on the back. Time for this interior. Hey, baby. Hi. You ready for your, uh, come on out. Come check this thing out. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've somehow convinced Jen to clean the inside. Actually, I offered her an oyster dinner and she agreed to it. She hasn't seen it yet though, so let's, uh, but the, uh, that did a decent job. It actually smells much better and it's a humid day today too. There she is. <laughs> you ready to see the inside of this? Yeah, how bad is it? And see what you signed up for. Gus, you too, buddy. You want to check out the inside of this thing? So this is what, how many dozen oysters gets me? <laughs> as many as you want. Take a look. Hey, Gus, you want to go for a car ride? Let's see what he thinks. Oh my God. Jump on in there, come on. No, there is no way. You'll be fine. <laughs> All right, wow. Well, while I go and get supplies, uh, you. Oh. This has got to be the worst car I've ever smelled. What What does it smell like to you, would you say? If you were to pin it. I don't know, like a dead body? 
<laughs> no, it doesn't smell that bad. Well, we ran the ozone generator. We're gonna give her a mask and let's see what the goose man thinks. You wanna come check out the car? Come on. If he gets into the car, that that says everything. There's no way he gets in the oh, car. Oh no, he took one sniff from There's Harry. There's no way. Gus, come on, boy. Come on, what's that? What's this? No! Oh. <laughs> All right, come here, bro. Get, no, Gus, no, no, no. no. Get out of there. <laughs> Tainted. All right, so it doesn't smell that bad. He's like, yeah, it's kind of kind of cool in there, actually. Well, now you need a bath, don't you, mister? Come on. He's probably so stoked that there's actually grass again. Oh, with the big leaf. <laughs> oh, you bit her butt, did you? All right, like get to work. Out. I know, it's so oh nice. God. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Attack her. Yeah, great ski weather, I tell you. I hope those gollies don't fall out. Order. And we're on a hill? <laughs> no, the dollies are on the driveway, though. Got it. I just uh, it. Uh, it's like a trampoline. Have some fun. So Jen is doing her own video on your second channel, right? On this? Little little ditty cleaning it out. Maybe she'll find something interesting. And I'll work on trying to get that trunk pop too. Go get some tires somewhere. I don't know. Oil filter belt. Let's make it happen. Hey, you know what I didn't think to check? Was the last registration sticker on the plate? 1990. Yeah. So that's uh, about 30 years, right? A little bit more. 33 years. Get that in the collection. I don't think it's gonna be too difficult to get open. Break away the rust a little. There we go. Hey, Bobby, no! <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a deep trunk. We got gypped with the, the Gran Torino. It's so small compared to this. This is uh, right in line with the Grand Marquis we got. Well, surprisingly, very clean inside of here. Oh, we got some spare, yeah. Oh, one of those compact ones. for saving space. And a bumper jack. Well, just part of it anyway. Oh no, there's the rest. Very nice. Spring, spring down on there. Probably a little bit bigger than it had to be. Alright, well, usually I'm glad for someone to open the door. Here we go. Voila! That's one way to do it. Still works too. Look at that. We could weld that patch back in, that's no big deal. Doors are open. I need um, glasses all now. Geared up. Where'd you get that suit at? Oh, I've just had it in safekeeping. Wow. Just in case. It's like a biohazard suit. Coupon, huh? Oh, that's, is this an early Valentine's Day present? Oh, yeah. That's real <laughs> love right there. And time to go grab a couple parts and some tires. I think I know just the place. I tell you, this Tundra is starting to feel tired, especially on these humid days. If you accelerate, it kind of bucks a little bit. It's got a good misfire. I think that's due to low compression. And you know, when the truck gets older, like in my case, it gets heavier because I put more and more junk in it. The engine gets more sluggish because it's worn out. And that really gives you that authentic worn out truck feeling. Uh, or as you young kids like to say, it clapped out. Truck, right? They had the oil filter in stock and not the right belt, but one size off on, no, I got one size bigger, one size smaller. Deco heavy duty. 
made in PRC, People's Republic of China, and China. And for some tires, let's see, somebody ripped the gate off of here. Um, hmm, doesn't look like we're gonna get lucky. Usually this thing's full of tires. I'm actually at my old work. Um, but yeah, these are nice though. 14s. They look almost new. They're not though. 2014. And the beads are falling apart. They're all super dry. Otherwise, I'd grab those. Oh well, I'll have to try one other place. I actually used to stash tires back behind this fence, but uh, oh, look at this. So you see all this trash? There is a guy that hangs out around here and he organizes trash piles. And true story, I used to organize some, it wasn't trash, I mean, I kept good stuff back here. Okay, so I still have a propane tank and 55 gallon drums. I gotta get those cleaned up, but one day, he, uh, he moved my stuff and he actually threw a bunch of like tires I had in the bin. And I was like, dude, those are good tires. Like don't mess with my stuff because I don't bother him. He just comes back here and I talked to him before. He, he's uh, got a thing where he, he uh, has to organize trash. It doesn't seem very organized to me, but so I'm telling this story to Jen and she's like, so wait a second, let me get this straight. You're arguing with a, a homeless guy about touching your stuff but it's not trash she didn't believe me she basically thought my stuff was trash but it wasn't like all these little piles these are all him he goes in the woods picks this stuff up and makes giant piles over here too and i i uh talked to him once i said a few times i've talked to him i offered to pay him per trash bag he fills up i said i'll give you trash bags and i'll give you whatever it was like five or ten bucks per trash bag and then we'll properly dispose of it but he didn't want to do that. He had no interest. And so he'd probably be mad at me right now for exposing his his trash piles, but it's not good. Look at what he's doing. This is crazy. Absolutely madness. I mean, it's great that he's picking this all up out of the cricks and whatnot, but it's like, what's the point if every time a windstorm comes, it just blows away? That's a nice little piggy bank. Like usual, we are way off topic, but uh, this here is a shame as well. You see the tree fell over and knocked out these beautiful arborvitaes. They're not the emerald greens, but yeah, check it out. Termites. Termites ate out the whole bottom and then uh, she gave. I can't stand people that litter and throw trash out of their windows. Another true story, I was once driving down this here road and the guy in front of me, the passengers in the back, rolled down the window and threw out a McDonald's trash bag and trash went all over. I wrote down their license plate, called the cops immediately. They actually went to the dude's house and uh, it, was, it was a young kid and his friends threw it out, but pff, that stuff would fire me up. Wait a second, I got the sale tires over here that they hang a banner on. Boom, there's a 15. Oh yeah, I was able to find a couple. How you make it out? <laughs> I'll give you a hand to help me finish it. He's cutting these rusty moldy seatbelts out and there's, here's the date. 42nd week of 1977, so this must be a 1978. I guess it could be a 79 too. And look at that. There is the build sheet. A little damp. So, this will definitely tell us here. Oh, well, you could just read the VIN too. So Jen has called it quits on this one and I don't blame her. I'm just doing some final vacuuming and getting everything up off the, the headliner because I essentially wanted to get it clean enough to be able to you know, maybe drive it, but we still didn't even, uh, it's uh, starting to become a lost cause. Noticing all these little balls of foam, it's like no wonder these things are super quiet from the factory. That every little crevice has foam stuffed in it. Back here, I mean, which is great, but then if water gets in, it causes such an issue and it accelerates the rot and gives nesting materials for mice, which I don't, I haven't really seen much evidence of, of mice being in here and it doesn't, it doesn't smell like that, you know. It's starting to smell much better, that's for darn sure. Try to get rid of all the nasty stuff.
windows. What do you guys think? Will these go down if we apply power? Does look this uh, wing window, oh, what the heck? Yeah, that's part of the window too. The whole thing goes down together. That's not quite a wing window. It's a fake wing window. I think this is gonna be the motor. See a purple motor down there. Well, yeah, it's got a broken clip. Somebody was in here at some point, zip tied it. But the old JF Eguo, it's almost 15 volts. This might give it enough juice to roll down. Probably not because everything is so corroded. I can tell you, I'm not driving this car with the windows up. No. There it goes! <laughs> oh, I love it. I think I was going the wrong way, though. A little shock therapy. Oh, darn. Motors did come back to life though. It's just stripped out internally. Really neat design though, as you roll down, the little uh, triangle goes down first and then the big one follows suit. Manual windows, gotta love them. I think we're gonna have much better luck with this back one. Look at that, because it's not used all the time. Junk. I just wanted to see that nice action on the, the windows. Finally, one of them works as it should. I'll see if these beads tear it too. Oh, oh, or punch myself in the face. There we go, fire the compressor up. These are totally still usable, but you know, a bunch of corrosion. And I bet you, if you just fill them up and drove them on the highway, it'd probably clean that stuff right out of there because the tire kind of wiggles back and forth, but these will be fine. <laughs> well, that was much easier than steel wheels. Set. Oh, of course, I uh, ran, rolled through Gus's poop. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Those little tires look pretty good. Fill her up with some freshy. This 460 deserves it. 7.5 liters of fury. You know, how did we end up here? Like, this car, it was free, by the way. Should have just been taken right to the scrapyard, maybe take the wheels, the cats off it 
junk it. But uh, I decided to try to give her a second chance, and as you can see, it's, it's pretty far gone, but few things come to my mind as far as uses, like definitely a good demolition derby car, uh, could make a good Mad Max cruiser style car, you know? Or uh, what's that movie, the Duke Mobile from Escape from New York? Put some chandeliers up on the front. I don't know, but way too deep into it to call it quits at this point. However, I think this video is probably running on pretty darn long, especially since my brain is all over the place. I'm showing you guys a little bit of everything. So uh, we, we jump off topic on this, this channel quite a bit. If you guys have any ideas of something you'd like to see done with this, uh, let me know if anybody's interested in a great running 460 engine and transmission that may or may not work let me know too but we're gonna find that out in a part two because yeah certainly didn't go this far to throw the towel in but uh, yeah we made some progress we got good tires on it now holding air clean windows uh interior still got a pressure wash the dash and stuff but it's all rainy and dark out there so uh, we're actually going skiing tomorrow and i figured you know what i wanted to get this video uploaded on friday it's actually like 4 30 in the morning on thursday right now i just editing all the footage and i'm like Phew. it's definitely my fault that we ran out of time on this one well, you know the snow came I was riding the, the king turd out there having a blast but there'll be a part two we'll get her out cruising if you guys got any feedback, let me know. And I thank you very, very much for tuning in this far, especially if you did, because I know this has got to be probably over an hour by now. So thanks very much. See you guys soon. No nonsense, no how. Over out. You're so strong. Tide at the river.